In today's video, I share with you about the Bamboo A1. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGGs are for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of June of 2024, we have this printed and painted ramshackle and ruin building made by 3D Egos. We have this set of Metromorph cardboard sci-fi terrain. We have $100 going towards the Port Royal crowdfunder. And finally, we have a Kickstarter pledge of the Forbidden Prince District 12, which I'm gonna be showcasing one of the examples in this video. Go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page where you can find out how to get in on that as Bob the Beholder is gonna be making his picks this upcoming Sunday, June 30th. So I purchased the Bamboo A1 a while back and have been doing some test prints off of it, comparing it to a couple of my other printers. And I just wanna say I did sell off all of my Prusa printers. I had three of them, two MK3Ss as well as a Prusa Mini. So all of those are now gone and I have replaced them pretty much with Bamboo Machines as well as an Anchor Make. The reason really is that the quality of the prints, the quality of the machines, I feel like are just better or at least as good as the MK3S as well as the newer MK4, but at a cheaper price. Now, if you are needing an open source machine, I still think Prusa is the way to go, but I have no needs for having open source. So for me, the bamboo machines are actually a better deal, are cheaper, and so I no longer have any of my Prusas as especially the MK3 prints relatively slow. Even though the quality is really high, I can get the same amount of quality off of the bamboo machines uh, as I do have an X1, and now with the A1, with the AMS, uh, it's a cheaper version of being able to do multicolor printing versus the AMS on the X1. You can purchase the A1 without the AMS, and I'm gonna share later on in the video whether or not I think that extra $150 to get the AMS multicolor uh, spool holder, whether or not that's a good deal and whether or not you should go for that. But definitely the A1 hits the sweet spot of being affordable at about $400 for the base machine compared to the $1,000 for the um, X1, or even the P1S. It is a bed slinger versus the core XY of the P1S or the X1. But in my case where I have multiple machines, having the bed slinger is perfectly fine for me. If I wanted to print with more exotic filaments other than PLA or with PETG, I might go with the more expensive enclosed um, P1S or the X1. But for most people, I think the A1 is the better deal and plenty of speed and ability to print both PETG and the 99% of my prints, which is printed out in PLA. If you notice with these close-ups from these prints, again, I think the print quality of the A1 is really close to the X1 and the speed in which it prints, I'm also impressed with that as well, as it's using the same bamboo slicer that the X1 is printing out at. Again, this is the first time I have had the ability to print out in multicolor. Now, 99% of my videos where I'm 3D printing terrain for tabletop miniature gaming is printed out in black, where I just spray prime it and I paint it up. And that process is actually relatively quick. I don't mind doing that. And for the most part, I think um, painting up your prints is sort of the way to go. But I did want to try out my hand at multicolor printing. And so here are some of the samples. And one of the first ones, interestingly enough, that I really wanted to try out was this counter that I found on Thingiverse. Again, there's going to be links in the descriptions below for any of these STL files. Originally, I printed out a bunch of these in single colors, and I really wanted to be able to see the numbers. Uh, some people I know use a marker to write in and color in the numbers, but I wanted to figure out a way to actually print these out. So this app finally enabled me to be able to print out the numbers where you can actually see them, and I just love it. I love having this, um, being able to see the numbers here without me having to color it in. Now, 
previously with my Prusas, I do um, multi-color printing, but you have to do it in layers. So all black at the bottom as a base, and then maybe the lettering you're printing out in white or a different color. But in the middle of the print, you have to stop the machine or set it so that the machine in the slicer will automatically stop and beep at you. You change out the filament, and then it continues to print with that one, uh, different color. So you could only do it based off of layer. But this is a case where the machine itself is swapping out the different colors as it's going along so that you're not restricted to various levels being different colors. So that's why these numbers can be um, filled in because these are printed sideways. One of the things I noticed right away is if you take a look at this, originally I had a black ring with orange uh, lettering in the middle. The orange really doesn't show up and then one of the rings that I printed out, there is a lot of color running between the blue and the orange. My guess is, is that it takes a while for the previous color to completely run out rather than mixing with the previous color. And for whatever reason, this ring was the one that was being printed out first as opposed to all the rings that I ended up using. So there was a lot of color running um, with this. And here is um, all of the extra, what's called um, PLA poop that happens because it's purging the different filament out as it feeds in the next color. So you are having quite a bit of waste. And it looks like this print block where it's actually printing out sort of a couple of lines. So again, that it's trying to completely purge. Um, it doesn't seem like it's doing it enough because you're getting some of these color mixings that I showed you here. But also, if you take a look at this model from Dragon's Rest, from the vehicle kit, you'll notice that for the most part, the colors are relatively clean. But right here at the nose, and this was printed uh, vertically, you start to see some of the colors running together. It's not quite as distinct. And that's because this was the tallest part of the print and there wasn't as much purging going on before this part was printed. So just sort of keep that in mind. And I think uh, if you take a look at this, and again, this is from uh, Forbidden Prints. It's a District 12 uh, Kickstarter that uh, most recently finished up. Antoine was kind enough to send me the file so that I could do this experiment. If you take a look at the small piece, definitely is super clear with the different colors, but this larger piece, what's supposed to be silver, it has a lot of color bleed from the other colors, or the black and the red, until you get up here to the top where it's just purely that color, where you have a very clear, distinct color there. So if you do multicolor printing, go ahead and make a comment below because one of the things I'm wondering is, does it make a difference that I don't actually use bamboo's filament when I'm printing this out? Because is the machine sort of catering towards their own proprietary filament? I'm not 100% sure. I use relatively cheap filament from Elegoo or um, in this case, uh, it's a variety of Hatchbox, which is a pretty high quality a PLA and a few other brands. So not 100% sure and you can see here this is the print block as well as all of the different colored poop and one of the tricks is the more you load up the plate with the colored prints the more efficient you're going to be because you're going to have the same amount of poop like this here if you print out all of these pieces on the build plate versus um, just even these two pieces that I printed out this print block actually is even bigger than this one here, and I have just as much um, of the poop in this poop chute. So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna do multicolor printing, just in terms of efficiency, print, try to fill out your plate as much as possible because of all the color changes that are happening. It's just gonna run more efficiently. Overall, this is quite a bit of waste. In the long run, I don't know if I'm going to do much multicolor printing other than things like this where I really can't get at it with paint. And I would say even though it's super efficient to not have to be uh, painting up any of my terrain or to be able to get the detail that is found in here because I would never uh, print up that much detail on a piece like this. 
I will say, I think I still prefer the aesthetics of hand painting my models. Because if you take a look at this, even though it's super cool that I have a mix of colors, it looks like a toy that I would buy um, at a store because the colors are so bright and distinct. There's no weathering in it. And as you can tell from a lot of my other videos, I like having a weathered look to a lot of my prints. It makes it look much more natural. So for example, I recently uh, came out with a video where I uh, painted up this ship from Second Dynasty and just, this doesn't look like a toy. It looks like a model that you would use for my RPG, which is exactly what I do. So this would look very, very different if, it, if the coloring, if the painting was super clear without any of the shading or weathering going on. So I'm just saying that aesthetically, I think I like painting models more so. Even though you're able to get some results here um, that I wouldn't necessarily be able to get by painting it, the aesthetics of it, I think I prefer to actually uh, paint my models. But you know, that's neither here nor there. If you don't paint at all, actually having multicolor printing available for you, I do think paying that $150 for the AMS for the A1 is worth it. But for a person like me who doesn't mind painting my terrain or my models, um, I don't think it would necessarily be worth it. Now, one of the features that actually is really convenient with the AMS is there has been a number of times where um, I have run out of filament in the middle of a print, especially as I'm going to bed. I know that I'm going to run out of filament. And so there's inefficiency because there'll be a number of hours after the filament runs out where the machine isn't printing at all. So having the ability to stick another uh, spool of black PLA or another color PLA and having it automatically go to that second roll after the first one is uh, completely used, that's super efficient and super convenient. But again, not worth the extra $150 just to have uh, that filament feature available for you. So it's sort of up to you. And the AMS does take up quite a bit of space uh, next to my machine. I have that space, but if space is limited for you, that might be another consideration. There is uh, the chance of mounting that filament spool on top of the A1, but I felt a little bit wary of having all of that weight sitting on top of my machine, so I opted to have it over to the side. So overall, my conclusion is that the Bamboo A1 is the best bang for your buck, especially as a beginner, getting into 3D printing, it is right now my go-to recommendation for people who want a printer, just in terms of cost, in terms of ease of use. Uh, even if you don't get the AMS, I think the A1 is one of the best deals that you can get. And in fact, right now, I think it is on sale, maybe at 60 or $70 off for the base kit for the A1. And in terms of the AMS, Again, take that into consideration if you want to have that feature or not. $150 isn't that much more in order to have multicolor printing as an option. But in the least, I think the Bamboo A1 is the machine to go to. Like I said, I got rid of my Prusa machines that are over $1,000 uh, pre-built. And now I'm super happy with my Bamboo printers. Go ahead and make a comment below about how you, what you think if you have compared, especially the bamboo machines to Prusa's, what your preference is and whether or not you agree with me with my assessment. Also make any comments about how you get rid of sort of this color bleed if you have used the AMS function before because, um, yeah, this just doesn't look that great on this. Although, um, for whatever reason, because I think it printed this piece out secondarily, uh, this is super clean too. Otherwise, I think for the most part, I'm going to be printing things out just in black and painting things up. Finally, use the link below to go to my Patreon page where you might be able to receive a full set of these STLs from Forbidden Prints. And thank you, Antoine, again for providing that as this month's uh, GGGGs. Happy printing. We'll see you next time.